Hi, I'm Chris from Windows, and hey, you can do this. You may well ask, what do I mean by this? Well, today's plugin is called Final Clip, and I'm going to use it to make a couple of points. I can show you a picture. Final Clip looks like this. It's one of the Air Windows plugins where there are no controls, and I made it in order to uh, use in Final Cut Pro. So essentially, it's my vocal chain, something which I've been working on for a long time on my videos. And in the most recent plugin video that I made, uh, somebody was very nice about enjoying the way that I sounded and looked, people seem to be pretty much into the production values. And I thought this might be a good time to get into a little of the, you can do this on the level of what does it actually take to do this? Cause I'm giving you a plugin. I'm giving you a free downloadable plugin that is a uh, final clip for use with Final Cut Pro, what that is, is essentially one stage of AD Clip 8, which I gave you last week. And it's what AD Clip 8 came from. It is a uh, clip only two type effect. And it's designed to be over zero dB because Final Cut, if you clip at uh, zero dB, it will um, place that 60B down. The gain staging is a little interesting, at least in the clip stuff that I'm working with. So what you do, you run Final Clip, and clip, uh, Final Clip clips a little less than 60B up, and also throws on that um, sibilance control, and that is nothing more or less than slew clipping, and the whole thing works on the uh, mathematical constant of the golden ratio, it does a bunch of air windowsy stuff like that. But the point is, just having that one plugin doesn't give you what I'm doing in these videos, and so this is a fine time to show what I am. So here we are on a sort of slightly shaky uh, additional cam, and you're looking at me, certainly, but this is also my mic. That's as far away as it is from my voice. That's the uh, pot filter that I've got on there. There's a little um, ISO thingy, but that doesn't matter all that terribly much. And we've got this blue cord, and the blue cord goes over to this camera, which is what I'm normally using to record with. And it's got a uh, an HDMI cable out, but I'm recording on that actual camera as well as on this one. And you can see behind it that there is a little screen. Because when I see my face on a screen, I always try to look at it. So if I am sitting here talking to the camera and my eyes are just barely poking over the camera, it makes it look as if I am looking at the viewer and the capacity of wanting to look into somebody uh, looking into eyes is a very strong instinct so if i had the the screen over that away i would be automatically looking over that away all the time and as you can see i'm still speaking close to the microphone here it's a pretty good microphone but a lot of it is just the fact that i can take this microphone and run it into the camera and the camera is just plain recording it at uh, 48K, but my project for Final Cut is 96. And it works out just fine. You know, you can generally get away with things like that perfectly well. It's processing, further processing is usually what you end up getting with uh, stuff like that. This is heavy. This is a, uh, it's another black magic. Um, their Pocket Cinema 4K. It's not the most devastatingly amazing camera. It's about a generation or so old and it's still very, very serviceable. 
you can also see on this camera that the way I'm getting lighting, you can kind of see in the reflections of my eyes if you know to look for that. It's a big old ring light. Here's another ring light. There's another one over there. There is a light that is uh, shining on the back of my hair, and that's actually quite bright. That is just a um, uh, store-bought and hardware store light with some uh, aluminum uh, hose tied around it and painted black. And over here, the slight tinge of color that we have is that blue and that red where you can see there is a kind of material in there, that what they call barn doors. However, what you might not know, this is what those essentially are. I've got a couple of different flavors of this. It is nothing but a cheap Amazon. It's, it's so cheap that you tighten it in too much and it crushes the plastic inside itself. Um, and this is what the barn door is. As you see, that is duct tape. And this is a sort of carpet material. It's like felt or something. And I found that in uh, Ocean State Droplot, if I'm not mistaken. When I say you can do this, that also extends to using things like uh, the medium of YouTube, where they basically just want to sell you things and show you advertisements and also manipulate people on a large scale. And as such, they will let you upload video and store it for you without charging you maybe pay you i don't get paid much from them but uh let you have that kind of voice to the extent that they let you have that kind of voice and then the rest is up to you nothing is helping you do better than uh phone cam in a car although granted like iphone fans typically end up getting a lot of different people's uh phone fans uh, end up getting pretty high quality recordings lately because that's something that's advanced. But all the stuff that I was showing you, whether it be, you know, the lights, the funny colored lights that are actually just these, uh, knowing how to do it, where the microphone sits, the little, um, it's, it's called a Stedman pop screen, but it's just a little metal screen and it's catching some of the thumps and the way that I'm not talking directly into it also helps catch the thumps. All of these things are stuff that you can learn and do in order to, uh, I don't know, do your media thing. And I really like the idea of popularizing that. I really like the idea of bringing the tools and know-how for how to do things in a persuasive, convincing, seemingly pretty high budget way. And I'm not going to say I'm not high budget, but again, my barn doors are made out of felt carpet and duct tape. And the diffusion is a piece of plastic packaging material. I have synthesizers. The blinking lights are wonderful. My guitars are usually bought for 150 bucks in a pawn shop and have gone through 60 million billion changes with different pickups being put in and getting a, a new bridge or tailpiece or putting a new nut on there, rewiring them over and over and over and over and over again. A lot of the stuff that I do is depend, like the, the blinky lights behind me, for instance. Uh, these blinky lights are a Eurorack system. And that's expensive. I mean, if my folks hadn't passed on and I hadn't ended up at one point in my life with something of an inheritance, that wouldn't be there. Bits of it were, even when that happened, but it expanded a lot at that point, and who can blame me? That DIY behind this shoulder, the red lights blinking, that is what's called a Zox box. I don't think you can get them anymore. But um, it was originally a thing from Mode Machines, and you bought them as a kit. It's this plastic box that would cost you about 50 bucks to buy as a plastic enclosure, and some circuit boards, and a whole bunch of parts. I built two of those from parts. That's one of them. 
So there's this whole combination. It's really important to know about. Here's another thing. Uh, bunking around with stuff a little bit there. I know what this is. And so I have set up some of my lights and colors and screens and things with stuff like this, which lets you focus your camera or get a white balance or, and that's making large popping noises, but that's why I made a final clip. Or this, which has color chips on it that I can set up and I've used this for some of my things in uh, Final Cut. I always try to use this color correction that I made by getting this and filming it with my uh, regular color stuff and then adjusting the uh, range of colors there to go more correctly to the right hues and intensities in Final Cut. This is not cheap, but it's not insanely expensive. It's a little plastic thing with some color chips in it. Also, note that the black is reflective, and that's because it's meant to be a really dark pitch black. And if it reflects color almost like a mirror, rather than simply diffusing it and getting the aggregate of all the color, much like the, the matte gray in here is, then when it's not reflecting, it's going to look more black. And these are just all the things that you can learn about. These are all the things that you can do to support stuff like when I give you the plugin uh, final clip, which I'm doing today. And you can download that. And I showed you a picture. I'll show you again. This is what final clip looks like. And that's a very small piece, but you know, it's all made up out of very small pieces of things that we combine together, use, and do the best that we can with when we're doing that creative thing of going, I'd like to make this video. I'd like to make this music. I'd like to make this sound. I'd like to make it better. And I have an idea as to how that should be. Because I don't get to make people agree with me about what I consider to be better. But I do get to pursue that for my own stuff. And so do you. So if Final Clip seems useful to you, there could be a number of uses, honestly. I made it specifically for putting in Final Cut Pro so that I could clip my uh, mic. This is the meta, this is the heavily meta Air Windows video. So that I could clip this mic and not have to fuss with it. And it would always do what I wanted. And if I raise my voice, it'll clip that pretty cleanly without becoming too excessive. And it will step on just enough of my sibilance that it'll be comfortable to listen to. It also helps that it's this particular mic because this particular mic has a good sound for like voiceover and stuff. It would be a good radio mic. It would be, there's a number of things like that. I've also got another mic back here, which is more of a uh, voiceover or cinematic style mic. And these are all choices that you can make. But uh, yeah, bottom line is you can do this. If you can't get all of the pricey bits together, I can tell you that the pricey bits for my video recording are the previous generation Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. This blue cable, which goes from the camera to any condenser microphone. Uh, the Roswell Colaris, which is the microphone that I'm using. There's also a metal pop filter. You could simply not use that if you wanted or use something else. And putting it in a particular place in front of me and talking into it. And that's that plus final clip is the whole vocal chain. Sometimes it's very simple. Sometimes you pick things that can work for you and then run with them. And with that, uh, I'm going to run because I've had a lot of fun talking about all this stuff. I had to because there was nothing really to show with a final clip. You do get to download it. I am putting that out, but 
it's one of those no controls ones. I was beginning to say that um, if you're not interested in using Final Cut and you can't see what use could be for a plugin that clips about 6 dB over zero, well, maybe you're running something like a really hot mix into a limiter on your bus. You could put Final Clip in front of the limiter and then it will catch extreme intense overs and then the limiter can deal with stuff after that point. And Final Clip, much like it is experienced in AD Clip 8, will also soften some of the highs going into the limiter, for instance. So it could still find uses, but the important thing is you've got it now. So I hope you enjoy it. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. I'm going to get back to work uh, this coming week. And we're going to try to bring the innovations of the Capacitor 2 plugin to things like my pair filter and biquads. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.